Hey, this is Alex Botmation Rising. Today I'm going to show you how to control your blinds with just a simple wave of your hand. So the idea came up, uh, I guess, one one weekend morning. I decided that, you know what be really cool? Is if you can just wave your hand just like they do in the movies and then the blind would just magically open. So the modification is relatively simple. You just need a couple components and some know-how of deep magic. Inside the blind, you just need a couple components. So to start, you need a warm drive. A warm drive basically is composed of two parts. One is your traditional gear that you recognize, and the other one uh, turns more like a screw. And this, this works really well for applications where you go from a really low power um, drive and then going to more of a high, high power side, in our case would be the blind control and then the power drive side in our case will be this next next item that you're going to need which is a stepper motor and the stepper motor is basically a motor which you can tell uh, just like in the name how many increment steps do you want to go so this gives us a very good control of how far to pull the string so to say to basically go from fully open to fully closed or if you really want to be nitpicky, you can make it go partially closed and partially open if you wanted to. Hey, so here, um, so here's the blind where you basically just need to take this out so that you can get access to the rod here. Try and do this one-handed. There it goes. And then you put your stepper motor controller in here. Uh, actually, before that, you need to put on this gear. Where did I put it? Before that, you need to put on a little gear here. And that basically controls the rod, which will control the blinds. And then you basically rig this thing up, which basically goes in here. I usually do this two-handed, but I'm a little lazy today. Take this. And then you have the gears on. Right, put this out a little bit more. And then that goes to your stepper motor control board, which then goes to a little Raspberry Pi, if you can see it here. So here we are testing this. As you can kind of hear, it's very quiet. And it operates very, very slow. Ooh, hard pop. But the blinds are slowly opening. Okay, so now let's get into the code here. So the code is basically based off of other people's work here I found on GitHub. I was looking for basically some sort of a hand motion, gesture, machine learning, whatever I could find. And I found a few, but I stumbled upon um, work here um, done by Pr Prasad Nine. So I, I provide the links. It's all in my um, the write up here that you're gonna see in the description page of my YouTube. And what this guy did was basically he worked off another guy's work, which is off of 
Uh, let's see what this guy's name is. I am B. Freiberg. I'm probably pronouncing this very poorly. Hand 3D gesture. And what it is basically, um, they found a way to basically do a geometric um, interpretation of your hands. And that's basically what I wanted. I didn't want to do it based off the entire body or whatever. I just want to do it with my hands. So the closest thing was this thing that I found. And it's it, it works relatively okay. It's not the best. Um, so as of the recording of this video, um, Google did come out with a newer their own version of gesture recognition uh, for your hands, but it was de basically developed solely for the Android and iPhone, so it's targeted towards the mobile market. Um, I looked into it a little bit. It's it wasn't going to be it's 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 going to be a little bit different, but I suppose you you can do the same thing if you can get that uh, up and running. But it will only work on your mobile phones, which I thought I think that'd be pretty cool for future applications where you basically just want to take um, all your gesture related stuff and, and, and then use your phone to do things. So basically um, I took the work from this guy uh, I played around with it. He's got some pretty good examples so once you're able to get uh, set up the environment uh, anyway it, it takes it takes a lot. It uses like TensorFlow and all that. I'm not going to get too into the, the whole setup of how to get this code to work uh, you just have to kind of figure it out yourself. Um, I, I was going to create one, but in order for me to do this whole thing, um, it would take basically a whole other video just to go through it. So I'm going to skip that part and assume that if you got to this point looking for gesture controlled window blinds, I'm going to assume you know what um, deep learning setups are and, and how to get this guy's code to work. Uh, but basically, it's really simple. You just need a TensorFlow and do some basic installations and just keep installing Python libraries that, as as you fail, just keep building it, just like with everything. So here we go. So this guy's code is relatively simple. You just do a Python evaluate pose, and then you have to download some additional data, which will get it to work. I have it all in my GitHub repository. So all you have to do is basically just download my github repository and basically it's it's a copy of this guy's code but with my code on top and you just run a separate code so actually let's show you my page I'm gonna search for myself go to my repositories let's see where did it go oh here it is all right so what I added was something called blind gesture and the blind pie. So the blind gesture is where you'll be running on your laptop or the device that you have with the camera hooked up. And as you can see, it uses TensorFlow, NumPy, Matplotlib, and all that good stuff. And in addition, OpenCV. Uh, so there's a couple modern modifications that you're going to need. Uh, so what you need is to uh, re-address this part to the Raspberry Pi that you're using because it's going over MQTT and whenever it recognizes a hand gesture that you're going to do, then it's going to send that command over to the Raspberry Pi on this particular IP address. And how that works, let me scroll down to my modification here. So try to make it a little bit obvious. So when you see the code run, you'll see these texts scroll across the screen to show you that you know you did a swipe left or a swipe right. So in my case, I did a very simple um, implementation of this. All I'm basically doing is I, I found out that the code doesn't do very well on trying to classify your hand gesture as if you if you hold up a V for victory or try to do like a bunny pose. I tried a little couple variations of that and tried to troubleshoot this for hours on end and I couldn't get it to accurately repeat the um, scoring high enough where I, I, I would trust it. So the next best thing is it can somewhat recognize your hand but still doesn't do a very good job at it. But it's the best I can do for now so 
I will try to improve this later down the road, but I don't know when I'll get to it. But for now, what I did was basically, as long as I saw your hand, if you move it across the screen slowly, so that's what the motion time is for. So I set the motion time to, to basically a slow motion rather than you just waving your hand very quickly like you're swatting a fly. This is more like slowly waving goodbye to a friend or something. And then if you go from left to right, then it's going to say, well, you're swiping right. And then if you go the opposite direction, you're swiping left. And when, that, when it gets recognized, then I basically send an MQTT command over to my Raspberry Pi with the topic of close or open. So that's how the blinds would then know. If I go back to back in the beginning here on my GitHub page, then you go to the blind page, blind Pi. So this gets loaded on your Raspberry Pi. And when it gets sees the message, it's going to see it and it's going to uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. So if it receives the message, then it's going to drive the blinds to the open and close position. So while I'm here, I'm just going to might as well explain the Raspberry Pi code too. So for the stuff that I bought from Amazon, um, it could only do a step count of four. Uh, this is also a, another example code that I found online. Um, there is also a code for step count eight. So if you find a step promoter that can actually do eight count, I guess it'll be higher resolution. Then you'll remove these quotes over here and then activate this code and then you'll quote these up away. If not, if you're using the same step promoter that I found on Amazon, then it's going to do a step count of four. And your GPIO pins. Of course, you can do any GPIO pins you want. Uh, for my example, I did 4, 17, 23, and 24. And if you need excellent how to hook up uh, Raspberry Pi GPIOs, uh, there's plenty of uh, code example out there from Raspberry Pi that does a much better explanation than I would. So I'm not going to get into how to do GPIO programming or wiring in this video. I'm just going to go explaining of just the stepper motor portion. So we do have an MQTT host. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi is um, basically started up an MQTT. You're going to need a Paho MQTT here. And what that does is basically creates a listening server and it's going to see messages coming from the laptop, the gesture program, whenever it gets it. And, it's, and this is all basically code that deals with the MQTT stuff. You don't need to really get in, too into it. Um, so as far as the stubborn motor goes, there is uh, a different code here. Uh, let's see, the stepper test right here, stepper test.py. So it's the same exact code, but I removed the MQTT portion. And what this will do is if you start it up, it's going to ask you a question of um, your time delay and how many steps forward and how many steps back. So the time delay is basically how fast you want the stepper motor to step between each step. So the lower the number, the faster this thing will move. I found out that the one from the stepper motor from Amazon can go as low as four milliseconds, but it does prevent it from giving more um, torque at the gears. So if you want more torque or if you get like um, slippage, like kind of like a video earlier where you heard the, the popping sound. So that was because I had it too quickly. So this thing was trying to drive as fast as it can, but then the stepper motor was not able to um, provide enough torque. So it kind of slipped, which then gives that popping sound real quick. So adding some uh, lube, I think, to, to the gears would, would definitely help with the friction on that part. But typically for what you should do is you, you should do, um, I would say anywhere between five and 10 milliseconds. Now I will tell you the gears that I'm using in this, in this um, video is definitely oversized uh, because the, to go from fully open to fully closed, it takes, I would say probably two minutes to go from fully closed to cl uh, open. And that's why you see it very slow, but it does get the job done. So if you're not in a rush to see it open and close, then 
the, the ones I bought off Amazon is just fine. But I couldn't find one that was relatively cheap. So the one I found was, was, was $10 for the set. So that was kind of a okay, okay deal. Whereas to get a more proper sizing, uh, for some reason, some of the other gears were like in the 20s to $50 for the set. And I didn't think that's worth it for, for each blind that I'm going to have to modify because that's going to add up pretty quick. So anyway, so back to this. So you basically set your timer. Um, to start, let's just do five milliseconds. And then how many steps forward, you do a small, small increments at a time. So to start, I would do maybe like 50 steps. And then just to see, make sure your gears and stuff are working. And then you slowly, uh, once you gain confidence that your setup is working and, and it's not gonna snap or do something weird, um, then you basically increase it to something a lot larger, eventually like 3,000 steps so that you can see it open and close. And then you, so you start at a starting point like fully open, right? And then you go um, to the other direction and to a point where you are satisfied what what means open to you. And then you record it down. So it, that could be like 6,000 steps, right? So it depends on your gear ratio, size of the gears that you get. So in my case, mine was about, I think, uh, like 8,000 steps to go from fully open to fully closed. But that's over a span of like two minutes. So that's basically it for this. Um, like I said, check out check check out the uh, the GitHub page. It's under Botmation Classified. Uh, of course, it doesn't show up in the first ones. Classified hand gesture pose. So check it out and check out the other guys' works. Um, they, they did a, definitely a fantastic job on that. So check out the code posted on my GitHub page, github.com slash botmation. And check out my blog page for additional information about this project and also information on upcoming projects. It is at create.botmation.net.